Hello, welcome to Worship at Home with Northampton Methodist Churches. We're glad you could join us today. We're going to be looking at God's calling upon us as his people to bring his gospel message to all people everywhere. And we're starting in Genesis chapter 12 with Abram. The Lord said to Abram, leave your native country, your relatives and your father's family and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram departed as the Lord had instructed and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot and all his wealth, his livestock and all the people he had taken into his household at Haran and headed for the land of Canaan. When they arrived in Canaan, Abram travelled through the land as far as Shechem. There he set up camp beside the Oak of Moray. At that time, the area was inhabited by Canaanites. Then the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, I will give this land to your descendants. And Abram built an altar there and dedicated it to the Lord who had appeared to him. After that, Abram travelled south and set up camp in the hill country with Bethel to the west and Ai to the east. There he built another altar and dedicated it to the Lord and he worshipped the Lord. Then Abram continued travelling south by stages toward the Negev. Our second reading is from Matthew 28 and Jesus renews the commission to take the blessing of God's call to all people. Then the eleven disciples left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some of them doubted. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you and be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Once again, welcome to Worship at Home. I am Phil Snelson, one of the Methodist ministers here, and this, this is my final Worship at Home with Northampton. God and his church have called me to minister in a new place in September, so I hope you'll bear with me if I try to squeeze the whole story of the Bible into the next few minutes. In the beginning, God expressed his glorious creativity in making the world the universe and everything in it. The best thing of all, right at the heart of it, were human beings whom the Godhead made in their likeness, male and female, complementary partners. He created them and invited them to partner with him in running this world that he had made. Then and only then. God declared it was very good, excellent, wonderful. When humanity rebelled, they broke the partnership with God and went their own selfish way. But God never let it go, never gave up on his perfect design. So in Genesis 12, we find God calling Abraham to join with him in a journey of faith to become a great nation that would be God's people and in missionary partnership with God, be a blessing to all the families on earth. 
Abraham said yes. And at the age of, 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 of a mere 75 years old, he set off with his wife, Sarai, and all the members of his household to a place he knew not where, but trusted that God would show him. Abram made plenty of mistakes along the way, even by the end of the very same chapter, but he continued in faith. God changed their names to Abraham and Sarah, and eventually the family promised them began with Isaac, who, with Rebecca, had Jacob and Esau, and the plan began to unfold. Particularly, I want us to notice that God's plan was always about blessing all the peoples, the families of the earth, not just Abraham and Sarah and their own family. The history of Israel is a long and complicated one, littered with mistakes and failures. More selfish rebellion corrupted their understanding of being God's chosen people, thinking themselves superior, especially entitled to God's blessings. There were some major successes too, and all the while, in spite of it all, God was still working out his plan to bring blessing to all peoples. Ultimately, through his son Jesus, his life, death and resurrection. And at the end of Matthew, Jesus restores the partnership calling again. I am with you always. It's a partnership, sending his followers to go to all peoples, teaching everyone to follow what Jesus had taught them, what he did as well as what he said. In other words, return to living God's way according to his design. I think that with the help of the Holy Spirit, the, the chosen people of the church are, are perhaps doing better at bringing God's blessing to all peoples of the earth. But there is still a long way to go, a long, long way. We too have made plenty of mistakes and fall into the same temptations of trying to keep God's blessing for ourselves while at the same time wanting all the pleasures of worldly things rather than the more challenging way of Jesus. As we seek to move on into a new chapter in our respective stories, you here in Northampton and me and my wife in Colville, let's reflect on the commission of Jesus to his followers, how we are going to make this the core of our purpose and vision in life. Let's heed the, the writer to the Hebrews who says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Join me in prayer. Lord God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Father of our Saviour and Lord Jesus Christ, we ask your forgiveness for taking your blessing for granted, keeping them to ourselves and not always sharing them with others. Help us as your people to follow the calling of Jesus, to join with you in blessing all people, and encouraging them into your kingdom family. We pray for persecuted Christians in our world, for whom following Jesus means much suffering. We pray for those who have been overcome with the struggles of life, doubt and fear, and for whom faith means nothing. We pray for those who have been bereaved, those who are in physical, mental or emotional pain. Faithful God, be with us as we seek to serve you 
so that we may reflect kingdom values rather than worldly values. We ask these and all our prayers through the powerful name of Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. And together we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.